Um, so I guess introductions are probably a good place to start. Um, so my name is Vanessa. I'm from Deakin Medicine in Australia. Um, but at the moment, I'm sitting in Hamilton at KOM Consultants. Um, so I've just met the team, um, lovely group, um, and looking forward to having a chat to you guys today um, about hopefully studying medicine in the future and hopefully in Australia. Um, so if you have any questions while I'm, I guess, introducing myself and the program, let me know. Um, just type them in and I'll answer as we go. Uh, so a little bit about who I am and why I'm the one that's sitting here in front of the camera today. Uh, I'm Vanessa Vaughan. I'm an academic with the School of Medicine at Deakin University. So Deakin University is a comprehensive university that's based an hour outside of Melbourne um, in southern Australia. Um, so you can probably see it on the map here. We're just here outside of Melbourne. Um, so we have a four-year MD program at Deakin um, that is really similar to some of your programs here in Canada. Um, but I'll maybe get to that in a little bit. But I teach public health into our medical program um, and spend a lot of time with our first year students and in particular our first year international students that decide to come out to Deakin. Uh, so if you do come to us, you'll see a lot of me in your first year, for better or worse. Um, I also do some research with the university, so looking at um, cancer patients and how we can help them get the best care possible. So making sure that everything that we do with our teaching is, is linked to best practice and best research. Thanks for the question, KS. So any preference to certain undergrad courses or programs to enter medicine? Uh, great question and good to see that you're thinking ahead. So for Deakin Medicine, we don't have any prerequisite degrees um, that you have to undertake. So to get into an MD at Deakin, you need to have a bachelor degree, so at least three years um, of a bachelor program, but you don't have to do that in a particular, um, a particular area. So a lot of our students do come through biomedical or health sciences, um, but then we also have a really broad range of other, um, other students come through as well. So we have a lot of people that have nursing degrees, physiotherapy, um, and a lot from outside the sciences, so or from outside health sciences. So we do have some engineers. Um, we've had a concert cellist, so a high level musician come into the program. Uh, two years ago, our ducks was a chef before she came in and did medicine. Um, a lot of teachers, lawyers, so what I would suggest, if you're keen to do medicine, but you're also interested in maybe exploring some other areas before you really commit to medicine, um, follow something that you're really passionate about um, and, and take that time to explore. But if you are really passionate about the sciences, are really passionate about medicine, it's of course not going to hurt to um, do a biomedical or, um, or health sciences type program and it'll really help long term as well. Hopefully that answers that question, um, but if you have more, please keep letting me know. Um, so we have a couple of different ways that you can get into Deakin Medicine. Um, one is to complete your degree, your first degree here in Canada um, and then apply to medicine in Australia when you're about to graduate your undergraduate degree. Uh, the other things that we look for are people that are really well-rounded. So yes, um, it is important to do well academically for medicine um, and we do um, in encourage you to focus on those studies, but we also like to know that you do things outside of your study. So making sure that you have other activities that you're doing to unwind, so making time for family. Um, if you are engaged with sports, keeping on with doing sports, um, volunteering, and um, making sure that, yeah, you just have that nice work-life balance before uh, you get into medicine because it becomes really important down the track as well. Um, we also, as well as your undergraduate um, requiring that, we also ask that 
you take the MCAT or the Australian equivalent of the MCAT, which is the GAMSAT. Um, and the crew at KOM will no doubt be really happy to, to help you out with figuring out what the cutoffs for those are. Um, but, but usually um, it's about a 125. So I think it's 500 all up. Uh, what are some other things about our program that make it interesting? Um, similar to Canada, Australia um, has similar education values, similar healthcare systems, and similar problems in our healthcare systems, uh, which is why I think that a lot of people do want to come to Australia to study medicine. Um, it's a nice, easy transition um, in terms of not too big a cultural shock. Uh, and I guess a lot of the attitudes are sort of similar. Um, we find that Aussies and Canadians tend to get on pretty well, which is always great. Uh, thanks, Gus, for the question. Will you be able to practice medicine in Australia after completing the program? And the answer is yes. We have a lot of our international students decide to stay on in Australia. Um, so they go through their four-year MD. Uh, after the MD, we have a one-year internship program, um, which is you've graduated from university and you have your provisional license to practice medicine. So basically, it's a one-year paid training program, um, and you'd be based in an Australian hospital for that 12 months. Once you finish that 12 months, you can register as a, a full doctor. Um, so you take the training wheels off a little bit and do your residency the same as what you would do in Canada. Um, when you're getting to that point, you can make the decision of whether or not you'd like to stay and practice in Australia or if you would like to come back to Canada or even somewhere else in the world. Um, and there are very um, clear pathways for if you decide that you want to come back. The exam for practice in Canada and Australia are really similar. Um, so we have had a few of our graduates come back to Canada practice, um, but a lot of them decide to stay on in Australia. They've come out, they've learnt the system, they really like the area. Um, and so we have a number of Canadians now that have graduated, gone through our intern program, um, have completed or are completing their residency and are now moving into specialisation in their chosen fields. So yes, you can definitely stay on and practice in Australia. Um, we do have some uh, areas that you may be interested in looking into working in once you finish um, and we have what's called a moratorium um, for students that graduate. So basically that means that once you graduate and you've gone through all of your training um, after graduation, so your intern year, your residency and your um, specialization, they, uh, the program will ask you to um, consider working in an area of workforce shortage. So those aren't always very rural or remote areas. So sometimes it would be um, a town that's maybe an hour outside of a major city that just doesn't have a lot of um, a lot of doctors in that area, um, whether that's family practice or whether that's a particular specialty. Um, so KS has asked how many spots are available for competition. Um, so each year we have a, up to 150 students in our cohort total. So 130 of those will be Australian students. And then we have between um, 15 to 20 places for international students available each year. So there's only a small number of places um, and it can be quite competitive, um, but it's so that we can make sure that we have a really nice, small, close-knit cohort that gets to know each other really well and um, that we're able to support. Uh, Com has just asked me, are there interviews as part of the entry requirements and are they held in Canada? And the good news is yes, um, the interviews that we do have are held in Canada and that's actually why I'm here in Canada at the moment is for our um, Canadian priority interviews. 
So the school calendar for Australia works a little bit differently um, to what it does here in Canada. Um, so in Australia, we start in January each year um, and then finish in November. That means that at the moment, we're actually doing interviews for our January start for next year. So we come over here in March each year um, to interview Canadians in person on the ground um, rather than trying to do interviews via Skype or having you um, fly all the way out to Australia for an interview. It's just a little bit nicer to do things in person. We get to know you a little bit better and you get to know us and make sure that we're the right program for you, which we think is really important. It's a really big commitment um, and it's a long way to travel um, if you're not comfortable with an idea. Gus has asked, do you understand the process, training for one year and then two years of internship? So the process of becoming a doctor, so you would have done your three-year undergraduate degree, so a bachelor degree, then your four-year MD. Um, then after the MD, we, you are graduated and you have provisional membership for, uh, or provisional practice rights in Australia. You then do a one-year internship, which is a hospital-based training program. So you are a doctor. Um, it's just that you still have a lot more supervision than what you might have otherwise. Um, and then most students, oh, sorry, most graduates then do another um, two years of a residency program similar to what you would do here in Canada. Um, some students only do 12 month residency, some decide to do a slightly longer residency. It really depends on the particular college that you decide to specialize with. But generally it's your four year MD, you graduate, you join the workforce for your intern year, and then you do another um, two years of residency program. When do first round offers usually go out? Okay, um, so we have a few different rounds. As I mentioned, our Canadian round is held first, so in March each year. Um, and for those offers, we make uh, for that round, we make offers in March, so students know by April uh, whether or not they are going to have uh, a place in our program starting January next year. Uh, we then have what we call the worldwide round, which is everyone else outside of Canada, um, but also includes Canadians that haven't had a chance to apply for our program yet. So if you miss out on our Canadian priority round, don't panic. Um, there's still plenty of time to apply before our June round closes. So for, so as I said, for the Canadian priority round, which we only consider Canadians, that is March with offers made in March. For the worldwide round, uh, the applications close the end of June. We have interviews in early July and then offers are made either late July or early August. Um, after all of that, we do have a second round, um, which is open to people from all over the world. And that round um, you, is closing the end of October uh, with interviews in November uh, and offers made in November as well. So much closer to that Janu end of January start date. Um, and, and we usually suggest that if you're keen on coming to Australia, um, and to Deakin specifically, to start thinking about your application early. Uh, KS has asked, do you accept applications while still in undergrad or pending graduation? And the answer is absolutely. Um, but you do have to be approaching the end of your undergraduate degree. So basically you would need to, um, if you're thinking about applying before you finish your undergraduate, you'll need to um, be scheduled to finish your degree before the commencement of our program at the end of January each year. So we usually suggest that you look at applying either at the start of your final year or in the final semester of your final year, depending on how your program is structured. 
Um, but if you're looking to apply before you graduate, um, have a chat to the KOM team and I'm sure that they can help you with figuring out when the best time uh, to lodge that application is for you. Uh, just been asked, are applications still being considered for the March round? Okay, apparently I have no sound uh, for the last few minutes. Sorry about that. I'm not sure why that would be. Um, we'll see about maybe turning up the microphone. No? Don't? Okay. Okay, KS, it might just be on your end, so you might need to make sure that you haven't accidentally muted us um, and, and maybe just check in again in a couple of minutes to see if that's resolved. And thanks, Gus, for letting us know that you're, you're all good on your end. Um, so our application still being considered for the March round. Uh, the March round closes today, um, so there is sort of that last minute chance for applications, um, but unfortunately we have completed our in-person interviews for this year. Um, if you get your application in and um, meet the minimum requirements or look like you're going to be on track to meet the minimum requirements, um, we'll see about potentially doing a Skype interview. Um, if you do happen to miss the cutoff date today, um, we'll definitely still get in touch and um, we'll basically help make sure that you're ready for um, that June-July round later this year. Um, definitely keep the questions coming in though um, because it would be great to find out what you'd like to know about doing medicine in Australia and um, questions about our program. Um, some of the other questions that we usually get about our program are how are they, how is it structured? Um, because it is a little bit different to some other medical programs. So at Deakin, you do your first, um, you do your first two years on campus, maybe similar to what you'd think about uh, with your undergraduate degree. So you have um, classes during the week. So you have lectures, you have practical classes, you have anatomy classes, you have clinical skills classes. So in our mock ward, learning how to you know, do your sutures and take blood and um, all of the slightly more fiddly stuff that as a research doctor rather than an MD, I don't, I don't have the joy of um, being involved in. Uh, and then one day every few weeks, you'll also have a community placement. So things like being able to go uh, along with an ambulance crew that, that's working in community or going and spending a day with a drug and alcohol research team, working in aged care or working with physiotherapists in community. So you do get to be doing placements pretty early on um, during those preclinical years. For years three and four, you're not on campus anymore. Um, so you will be out with one of our five clinical schools and they're based all over Victoria um, in Australia. And basically it means that you're completely in a clinical environment rather than in a classroom. And that's fantastic because it means you're really getting immersed in the environment that you'll be working in in the future. You're learning how those teams work, how you fit in with those teams uh, and all of the systems that you need to use, how to interact with patients. Um, so really learning in the environment that, that makes the most sense for, for when you practice down the road. Uh, so you'll still have classes during that time, but you're doing more rotations, you're not having to sit in a lecture theatre, um, so it, it's a bit more of a hands-on interactive environment. Um, just briefly, KS, um, because this is being recorded, so um, hopefully you'll be able to go back and, and double check the answer in full. Um, but yes, we do accept while you're still doing undergrad, um, but the timing for that differs depending on when you're scheduled to graduate. So have a chat with the team at KOM and they'll be able to help you figure out the best time to lodge your application. Oh, thanks, Juanita, um, for, for jumping in there as well. Um, so a little bit more about the structure of our program. 
uh, we're a pretty integrated program. So rather than studying um, subjects in isolation, all of our different topics weave together so that you have uh, a, a fuller understanding of, of the practice of medicine. So basically, we teach in systems. So you learn about the cardiovascular system or the respiratory system or the gastrointestinal system. And all of your classes in a particular block are geared towards helping you understand that system. Um, and we teach with cases. So each week you'll be in a small group of, of eight to ten people and you'll be presented with a case. And sometimes that's a real case that our clinicians have seen um, or it's based closely on a real case. And you as a group will work through that case the same way that you would if you were in a clinical setting. Um, all of your lectures and practical classes and tutorials for that week will all be geared towards giving you the skills and the knowledge that you need to be able to solve that case. And it, it's a little bit, uh, it, it's a bit more, uh, as I said, integrated. So it means that rather than learning about the anatomy of the foot in one class and then something to do with blood flow in another. Um, it's all very much focused on the types of things you'd see in the clinic. So the symptoms that would go along with, say, that, that heart attack rather than random other parts that are a bit harder to put together to form that big picture. Um, we have a few other things in the focus of our program as well. So everyone thinks of medicine as being that knowledge of health and illness and that knowledge of body systems and clinical skills. Um, but we also have a real focus on making sure that you understand things like uh, the public health, the things that are in our environments and in our day-to-day -day lives that are then leading to these conditions. So thinking more about prevention of ill health rather than medicine as just curing those things that those um, conditions and um, the ill health that we have. Um, we also do a lot of work with making sure that uh, you can understand and approach different problems from, from different perspectives. So giving you tools and things like research and how to analyze literature, which are really important for future doctors. Um, both in your practice and, and because medicine is quite competitive. So getting that little bit of um, a, an edge on, on maybe some of the other grads that are out there. The other thing that we really focus on is making sure that you have the right professional skills moving forward. Um, so making sure that you understand health ethics and ethics in medicine, making sure that you understand the legal aspects of practicing medicine, and making sure that you have some of those professionalism skills as well. So excellent communication, the ability to work in teams, self-reflection, those types of really important skills that um, we want to make sure aren't neglected because they're critical for being a good doctor down the track. Uh, Okay, what other questions do we have at the moment? Um, we have someone who's very interested in the rural focus at Deakin. Great to hear um, because Deakin was set up um, to address our rural doctor shortage that we have in Australia, a problem that also happens here in Canada. Um, how is it different from a residence in general family practice? So rural areas have their own challenges um, and it's things like a uh, reduced resources and access to resources. It's also things like there's a bit of isolation. Rural areas have different problems and, and different benefits, but things like um, some conditions are more prevalent or um, more present in rural areas. Um, there's often higher levels of poverty in rural areas. And it takes longer to get access to services. So if you're working in a rural practice, chances are you may well be a family a family physician. Um, and that's great because it means that you have a really good opportunity to get to know your community and get involved. And you see a lot of really interesting things that you might not see in the city. But it also means that you need to learn to work relatively independently. Um, that you do need to be across a broad range of things that you might not see otherwise. 
So even though you might be in general family practice, you're having to know how to do a little bit of that emergency medicine and helping people with sutures. You might need to know how to look after someone that's, that's pregnant or about to deliver a baby. So you need to have some of those obstetrics and midwifery skills that an urban doctor might not need. So as well as giving you skills for what would be general family practice, we also teach you a little bit more about what to do in those resource constrained settings and when you're having to work, when you're not with a large team of specialists. So even though we'll teach you how to work in a well resourced um, urban environment or in a city environment, when you have all of those high tech and top of the line approaches to take, we also just add that extra layer of what to do um, when maybe you need that little bit of extra creativity to, to manage particular um, conditions. Um, does, so hopefully that answers your question about rural, but um, if you want me to get a little bit more specific, please just let me know. Um, another question that we've had about our entrance requirements. So doesn't score of undergraduate study have an impact on acceptance? And yes, it definitely does. So when we're looking at your undergraduate degree, even though it can be from any area, you do have to have a minimum, we do have a minimum GPA requirement of that undergraduate degree. Um, so that's about 65% across the three years of your undergraduate degree. So in Australia, we work on a seven point GPA scale. Um, and I know that depending on the university or college that you go to in Canada, the scales vary a little bit, but that guide of about a 65% um, or a sort of very high credit or a, a distinction average is the minimum. Um, the higher you do, obviously, the better off um, you'll be ranked. When we're talking about rankings for entry into medicine, um, we have a real focus on the interview. So your interview score makes up half of your entrance ranking mark for our medical program. Um, and that's going back to that well-rounded um, student that, that we're really looking for. Then the MCAT score and your GPA will each make up 25% of your admissions ranking score. Um, we also do have some bonuses that are available. They change from year to year, but if you've grown up in a low socioeconomic area, if you've grown up in a very rural area, or if you have prior clinical experience, um, those can all potentially go towards bonuses for that admissions ranking. Um, all right, I seem to have run out of questions, so definitely please keep them coming. Um, some other interesting things, I guess, about our program and our location. So as I mentioned right at the start, Deakin Medicine is um, based an hour outside of Melbourne and we're on the coast um, where our location is called the Surf Coast. So as I'm sure you can imagine, lots of really nice beaches and good surfing around us. Um, really nice, nice, relaxed, laid back attitude um, and, and a bit more of a casual school. So um, everyone calls me Vanessa when we're at university. It's not Professor Vaughan, it's not Dr. Vaughan, it, it, it's just all first names. And part of that's because we know that once you graduate, um, you're going to be our peers. So it doesn't really make sense to us to um, sort of put ourselves higher when, you know, in a very short period of time, um, we'll be working closely with you for our patients, for our communities, and also training our future doctors. Um, so a really nice collegial environment. Um, we're, it sounds a bit cliched, but we're a bit of a big family uh, where we get to know all of the students in our cohort um, by first name and they get to know all of their lecturers, all of their TAs, all of their clinicians that they work with, um, which is something that, that's really great and quite unique about Deakin's medical program. Um, let's see. Are we still having sound issues? Anyone? Uh, do we have a research focus at Deakin? 
Yes, we definitely do. So as part of our MD, um, we have what's called the Research Scholar Program. So basically that starts in your first year when you start putting together um, ideas for a research project that you'd like to do. And then we work towards that across your whole degree. So in first year, it's really focused on you developing the skills that you'll need for future research. So things like learning to read and critically analyze um, the medical literature and how to put together um, essays in an appropriate way, how to write journal articles, a lot of the nitty gritty um, of research. And then you start working towards things like putting together a project proposal, putting together literature reviews, learning how to ask research questions. Um, and these progress through your degree um, and culminate in a project that you do across your third and fourth year. So you're partnered with an academic who helps to supervise that particular project. Um, and at the moment, most of the focus of those is in the public health, um, preventative medicine and ethical um, consideration space. Some really interesting questions in medicine that haven't been answered yet. So that's, um, and basically at the end of your fourth year, all of the students um, come together and present uh, a thesis of their work. And we have a bit of a mini student conference um, for all of those 150 students in that final year um, where they get to share their ideas and share their research. And then um, we help you on the path to publication as well. There's some other research options as well. So a lot of students take up um, a bit of research on the side while they're doing medicine. Um, it can be hard to find the time sometimes. Medicine's a busy program, um, but we do have some students that work with, with some of the researchers and clinicians um, on their weekends or in their free time. Uh, we have the option that you can put your degree on hold for 12 months and do a one-year honours research program. So during that year, you'll focus on a research project, develop and run the, uh, the study and then complete a thesis uh, and then go back to your medical studies. And then we have um, two major degree programs as well um, that you might choose to do once you finish your medical degree. And that's a Master of Philosophy, which is a two-year research program or a PhD, um, which is a three to three and a half year program um, where you really get to focus on very specific research. Uh, KS has asked, if I take my undergrad in Australia, does that make a difference? Uh, it can do. Um, and I guess we don't necessarily put Australian degrees at a higher advantage to um, Canadian degrees at all. Um, so if you do want to stay in Canada to do your first degree, um, you won't be negatively affected by that. Um, one pathway that is potentially available if you're so inclined, um, at Deakin we also have a Bachelor of Biomedical Science and for our Bachelor of Biomedical Science graduates, we have up to three places reserved in the medical program each year for international graduates of that Bachelor of Biomedical Science. So that Bachelor is a three-year undergraduate program um, and it's focused on biology, chemistry, a little bit of physics for the life sciences, um, but, but very much focused on getting you to a place where you're in an excellent position for either undertaking medicine or going into further research or working in industry. So, so that there is that potential pathway. Um, I do need to tell you that that's not a guaranteed pathway. You still have to do well in the program. But if you do graduate from that particular bachelor, we do have those three places that are available. Um, so I would say go where your heart takes you for that first degree. Um, study where you're going to be happy. Find a program that you really want to do um, and, and then pursue it. Um, 
hopefully your sound started working again so you heard that response um, but I might type a couple of those answers out um, once we finish or um, you might have a chance to go back and watch after. Um, while you guys are thinking of some more questions, um, and another thing that I know a lot of people ask about um, is employment once they finish a medical program. Um, and because it is a very competitive space, um, but it's also a very rewarding space. And one really um, great thing about our program is that we're really focused on making sure that you're work ready once you graduate. So um, our students have worked really hard in our program to make sure that they develop all of the skills that they need in order to um, do really well in the workplace. And we've actually just had a question come in about that, which is how successful are Canadians when they apply to match back to Canada from Deakin? Um, so unfortunately, I don't have a full confirmed number. Um, sometimes it's a little bit hard to to stay in touch with our graduates. But for those graduates that we are still in touch with, those that have chosen to come back to Canada to match through CALMS um, have made a match. They tend to be students that are very passionate about working in family practice and in rural areas, um, which potentially might help them with being successful in that match. Um, with our program overall, um, Deakin Medicine has been going since 2008 and all of our medical graduates who have wanted to go through our intern and residency matching programs have received a match. We've had a couple of students who've gotten to the end of their degree and decided that medicine wasn't for them, um, but they've also found employment. So a couple of those decided, although they really liked medicine, they were really passionate about research so they went into research rather than medical practice. Um, we also had one who had been a lawyer previously, so rather than going and practicing medicine, um, they took what they learned in medicine and they decided to practice um, health law instead. So even though you get a medical degree, you don't necessarily have to go into medical practice. But again, all of our students, not and uh, not just our Australian students, but all of our international students so far have made a match in the location that they've been wanting to make a match. Um, and I think that goes back to the point that I was making about making sure that you have the skills that you need when you graduate to do really well in the workforce. Um, part of the matching process in Australia um, is that the uh, the institutions that you're applying for, so those hospitals and health services that you want to work in in the future, um, are also, as well as you saying you want to work with them, they're saying and looking at whether they want to work with you. So the fact that we have our students in those clinical schools in years three and four means that they're getting to know the people that are making those decisions. They're getting to know the systems where they're going to be working down the track. And all of that's really important for that matching process. So if a particular hospital knows that you're someone who can work really well in that system and works well as part of a team, um, it definitely helps um, improve your chances of a match down the line as well. Is a gap after undergrad acceptable? A year, under, uh, a year off or more even is perfectly acceptable. Um, we understand that things come up. Maybe you've decided that you want to take a year out and work or travel or spend time with family. Um, maybe you've done a particular degree and you want to get some experience in the workplace. Maybe you have a clinical degree and you've decided that you want to get some clinical experience um, be that as a nurse or a physiotherapist or, or a speech pathologist. Um, and we think that's really beneficial for, for our students, definitely. So if you decide that you do want to take a year out or more, um, definitely pursue that. Um, we have a lot of students that have done that 
and that have dis or have decided to pursue further study before coming into medicine. And those students tend to be the ones that do really well um, because they have a little bit of experience that really helps to, to help them through that program. So they are developing skills that are helping them to learn, that are helping them to do well in teams, um, maybe a little bit of leadership, those types of things. So it's definitely not frowned upon. Um, it's perfectly acceptable and um, makes you a a more well-rounded student and doctor down the track. Uh, another question's come in about completing um, study in Australia. So you would do your four years undergraduate and then your one intern year and then you can come back through the CALMS matching system. Yes, that is correct. Uh, the chances of matching to a specialty in Australia as a Canadian. Uh, I can definitely send um, KOM through the specifics of that. Um, we cannot guarantee anyone an intern position, um, but we do have that 100% match rate that we're working very hard to help our students maintain at the moment. Um, the way that matching works in Australia um, is that Australian students who trained in Victoria are preference first in Victoria then international students who trained in Victoria and then the rest of Australia. So international students in um, Victoria do have a little bit of an advantage to um, studying in other states as well if you're wanting to stay in Victoria. Uh, in terms, we haven't yet seen the statistics from last year's match, but for the year prior of all of the international students that applied for a match in Victoria, only two students out of our three medical schools in Victoria did not receive a match. One of those students failed their final semester and so wasn't eligible and the other student um, received a match in a different state. So even though they, there was those two students from three medical schools that didn't receive a match in Victoria, um, the one that qualified for a match still did have a match somewhere else. So the statistics are still quite good, um, but we can definitely get you, in, uh, get you some extra information so that you can look into that in more detail for particular specialties that you might be interested in. Um, the ones that have the highest matching rate are things like family practice. Um, uh, everyone sort of wants to be uh, a surgeon or a neurosurgeon or, or a dermatologist or a cardiologist. And some of those are very competitive specialties. Um, whereas things that we, the, the type of specialties that we always need are, are family practice. And especially family practice in lower socioeconomic areas or regional areas where um, there's still really good experiences and great places to be. They're just not in the middle of the city. Um, so slightly more challenging, but definitely um, still very rewarding areas. So slightly higher match rates for general practice and family practice as a specialty. Um, are there visa and residence issues? None that we've been made aware of up to this point. Um, the, once you graduate from a Australian medical school as an international medical student, you do have um, work rights at the moment. Um, we do always suggest that um, you check in with our immigration department because sometimes those rules do change. Um, we also have international student advisors at Deakin and all universities have those international student advisors who are very knowledgeable about visas um, both as a student and for your work rights afterwards and they're always very happy to have a chat um, about some of those those questions around visas and residency. On average, how much does it cost, cost over the course of the four years as an international student? Um, the student fees for per annum next year are approximately $70,000 Australian and they increase um, by 2 to 3% every year at the moment. Um, we usually say living costs of between Fifteen and twenty thousand dollars Australian per annum, um, which allows you to be quite comfortable. Um, 
so you won't be having to eat two-minute noodles um, or, or ru instant ramen um, all of the time with that type of living costs in mind. So that's that's approximately say two hundred and seventy to three hundred thousand Australian for tuition. Um, one thing that we do to help you with your cost of living in your first semester um, for our Deakin International Medical students, we have what's called the accommodation bursary. So you would get your first semester of on-campus accommodation um, free of charge. So the School of Medicine um, helps you get a place on campus and you don't have to pay anything for that accommodation for the first semester, just to help you settle in, get to know the area, make some friends, um, but, and then if you decide that you'd like to live off campus, you can find a place off campus um, in your own time rather than having to scramble around right at the start. Okay, been asked if there is USMLE prep in the curriculum. So there is not specific USMLE prep in the Deakin curriculum. Um, very few of our students have decided to go back to the United States to practice. Um, we do teach very strongly towards the um, Australian equivalent, and I am also um, I've also been told that the Canadian equivalent is quite similar to the Australian. Um, while we don't have specific prep within the curriculum, a lot of the things that they'll be assessing will be the same. So it'll be around your knowledge and skills to make sure that you're at the equivalent level of their medical graduates. Um, we also have every year a couple of students that are able, uh, that band together basically, um, and set up study groups for the USMLE. Um, and we are starting to look into how we're able to support those groups a little bit more formally, not necessarily within the curriculum, but us as the international team. Um, so potentially helping you with study spaces, finding, um, tuish, uh, finding tutors if you need them. There are some formal prep programs in our local area. Um, but they're not provided by our university. At the moment, they are through private providers. Um, so basically, the very short answer is not within the curriculum, but there are other avenues to still get that prep um, in preparation, sorry, to get that prep for if you would like to um, go through the US MLE down the track. Is there a physiotherapy program at Deakin? Uh, no, unfortunately, we do not have a physiotherapy program at Deakin at the moment. Um, there is one that is currently being considered, but um, if it is approved, it still won't be for another few years yet. Um, but there are some other excellent physiotherapy programs in Australia, um, including a couple in Victoria um, and some in some other areas that are really excellent programs. So have a chat to the KOM team um, and they'll be able to help you figure out the best program for you. Psychiatry. So thinking about psychiatry, that's a little bit of a longer term option. Um, so you would go through your MD and then specialise in psychiatry down the track. Um, we do have specific mental health blocks in our program. Um, and then in your final year, you have the opportunity to do a six week elective anywhere in the world, looking at any type of medicine that you would like. Um, so if you do have a passion for psychiatry, we usually suggest that um, while you're in your medical degree, you consider doing that placement in psychiatry, just to give you a real good chance to uh, fully immerse yourself in that type of, in that type of practice um, and, and give you a bit of a clearer idea of what the pathway is through to psychiatry as a specialty and also help you develop that network of professionals that are already working in that space. Uh, interested in the rural component of the curriculum, could I elaborate on the experimental and practical component? Um, we don't have specific experimental um, components to our rural curriculum. Um, if you are interested in doing research um, in a rural context, you can definitely pursue that during the Research Scholar Program. In terms of practical components um, of our curriculum, 
So in the first couple of years, those practical components are geared towards either your learning of clinical skills that are going to be relevant for your future practice or practical classes in the sense of doing labs in anatomy and pathology. Um, once you get out into more of the clinical environment, um, we have a few different clinical schools. So if you're interested in a rural focus, um, three of those are very regional or rural focused. One of those is called Ballarat, which is based in a town an hour north of Geelong. We have a clinical school in Warrnambool, which is a coastal rural town, which is two hours to the southwest of Geelong. And then we have our rural community clinical school in which you'd be based in um, hospitals around Victoria. And that's our really rural experience. Um, no matter which of our five clinical schools you go to, you will do at least three weeks rotation through a rural clinic um, to make sure that you have um, some cl rural clinical experience. But if you're really passionate about rural practice, um, you can spend those that third and fourth year in a rural area um, and, and training in that rural area. Um, is there a psychology undergraduate program at Deakin? Yes, there definitely is. Um, that does sit within our faculty, but not specifically within our school. So I don't have a lot of information to hand about that. But Deakin does definitely have undergraduate psychology um, programs that are open to international students. So that's an excellent point for if you wanted to pursue psychiatry, um, would be doing that psychology undergrad to, to really get that focus early. Um, so definitely look into that if you're keen on, on that particular program. Are there prearranged ties between Deakin and residency programs in Canada for the allocation of residency spots? No, we do not. I'll be really forward about that. Um, we do not have prearranged ties with any institution in Australia or abroad for the allocation of residency spots. Um, that's for two reasons. One, we don't want to pigeonhole our students. Not everyone wants to work in particular areas, so we want to make sure that you have the ability to go wherever you want to go. Um, it's also about making sure that we have um, appropriate people going into those residency positions, which is why our matching system um, in Australia works the way it does. So although we don't have prearranged ties for residency matching programs, um, that's part of why we suggest doing the six month placement where you want to practice in the future um, so that you can get to know that system build some networks um, and, and find out whether that particular area is open to a match down the track. Um, in Australia, we don't tend to have those types of prearranged ties, certainly in Victoria. Um, so although some students tend to go to some hospitals and healthcare providers, um, a lot of that time, a lot of the time, it tends to be more based on reputation of students and experience of the students rather than um, a formal arrangement. We do have some partnerships with universities um, in Canada that have medical schools um, or that have close links with community clinics. Um, but rather than providing, uh, providing pre-arranged residency allocations, um, we work with those universities um, for that elective placement that I mentioned, so they can help you find places to do that elective so that you can make those connections. Are Australian physicians allowed to practice in New Zealand? Um, yes, uh, as long as you have completed your uh, MD, uh, there are pathways to help um, Australians, Australian trained doctors who would like to practice in New Zealand, uh, transfer over New Zealand to practice and um, vice versa, people that have trained in New Zealand to come over to Australia. Um, I don't have specific uh, statistics available on that um, because a lot of those students that make that transition between the two aren't international students. 
So uh, in Australia, um, New Zealand students are generally considered um, in the same category as Australian residents. Um, so there's a few different uh, restrictions and rules around those particular students and graduates. Um, but yes, you can uh, qualify to practice in Australia, uh, sorry, in New Zealand if you've trained in Australia. Um, you would still have to sit the practice exams, um, so sitting for registration once you graduate. Is there residence on campus for international students? Definitely. Um, and I'm actually Deakin alumni, so I lived on campus at Deakin myself for three and a half years. Um, and it was probably the most fun three and a half years that I've ever had. Um, so we have specific medical student accommodation on campus. Um, and so you're housed with other medical students or master's level students. Um, that accommodation is just a couple of minutes away from lecture theatres, which is really handy for um, being able to basically get out of bed and walk the two minutes to your lecture theatre five minutes before your lecture starts in the morning. Um, it's quite comfortable accommodation. It's usually a three or four bedroom house. Um, so you'll have your own private room. Um, sometimes you'll have an ensuite attached to that, sometimes not. Um, and then you'll have shared spaces, so a shared kitchen, um, a shared living area. Um, and, and it's nice just to be able to have that slightly quieter environment to study in because me medicine's a, a program that has a lot of time that you'll have to be hitting the books or doing assignments. Um, we also have a few larger dorms as well, so um, dorms that might have 10 people or 12 people in them. Um, again, you would be housed with medical or other master's students um, and again, you will have your own separate room. Um, at, at Deakin, we don't have um, more than one student in a, in a room on residences and you would have your shared living areas, so the shared kitchen and those types of things. Um, I may have mentioned before, or I hope I mentioned before, um, that you get that first semester of on-campus accommodation free of charge. Um, the school pays for it uh, when you start medicine as an international student. Um, and, and that's in that on-campus accommodation um, for medical students. If you don't want to live on campus, um, there are lots of other options around Geelong. Uh, it's quite an easy city to get around um, and there's some really nice areas whether you want to live a little bit closer to the middle of town, so where it's a little bit more of the hustle and bustle, um, some nice laneways, good cafe culture, um, which I guess Geelong and Melbourne are really famous for. Um, or in one of our quieter suburbs where there's a lot more families and a lot of students. Or a lot of our students after their first year actually decide to um, live 20 minutes down the road right near the beach. So a nice way to unwind after a long day of learning in the medical program, um, having home a short five minute walk from the beach. So lots of other options for students as well um, if you decide that you don't want to live on campus. Um, but again, the on-campus accommodation at Deakin is pretty new, uh, it's pretty nice and I had a great time there when I was a student at Deakin. Um, and thank you KOM, as, you've just, as they've just mentioned, um, they are really experts on Deakin Medicine Program, we've been working with them for a while now here. Um, so if you have any questions about our program, definitely let them know. Um, and they can put you in touch with us to answer any questions as well. Um, if you do apply for Deakin Medicine um, down the track, I really look forward to meeting you um, and hopefully interviewing you here in Canada um, in the next few years. So definitely uh, stay in touch if you're keen on medicine in Australia. And thank you everyone. Um, it, it's been a great hour of, of hearing your questions and thank you for, I guess, giving me the time um, in what are no doubt really busy days um, to help you get to know our program a little bit better.